Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Writer's Chat. This is the place where writers like to gather. Together, we talk about all things writing, about writers, for writers, and by writers. So we're really glad you're with us today, here either live, and we'd love to see a lot of our good friends in the chat, or you're watching the replay, because we know a lot of you watch the replay, and we really do appreciate the time that you carve out for your own <laughs> writing craft and to be be a, just become a better, better writer to spread God's word. My name is Jean Wise. I'm one of the co-hosts, and I'm joined today by a lot of our buddies. We got <laughs> Melissa who's going to help manage the uh, uh, chat, and we got Johnny. Say hi, Johnny! Yay, yay! <laughs> and our special speaker today is our very own, and we just love her, Rhonda. <laughs> and Rhonda's going to talk about contests. I think it's contests, isn't it? And all that on that so go uh johnny do you have anything to say before we get started i'll save my stuff till the end <laughs> okay that sounds good okay Rhonda, we'll turn it over to you thank you gene it's so great to be here i love writers chat i love serious writer and part of what i'm going to share today it may just seem like a serious writer love festival but that is just kind of the way i am i have really appreciated serious writer and uh our Topic today is contest savvy, enter and win. And uh, one of the reasons I wanted to share today was I was nominated and, and received an award last year in 2019. I was Serious Writers Writer of the Year. And uh, I've been to several contests and, and uh, different conferences and people say, what was that like? Well, I'm gonna give you a little preview. I'm gonna share some never before seen video of what it was like to experience a serious writer contest. And as you're listening to this, I just want you to think, okay, what if that were me? Because I guarantee you, it just as easily could have been anyone else who went through this process. So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm going to um, just share with you a few little uh, videos that I've had uh, have here on hand. The first one is the video of when I found out I won. And you have to be my very good friends to see this, either that or you have to find me on the internet. So, cause I was in a car on a way to North Carolina for a funeral. When we were out in the boon diggity dogs of Kentucky, I couldn't even get a cell phone unless I held my phone out the car window. And this is what a video that we recorded right after I found out I won. Let's see if we can, if this works. So. This is Rhonda, standing by a stream in Grundy, Virginia, just far off the map. That we couldn't even get a cell phone signal when I got the call to find out that I'm serious writer, writer of the year. And uh, if I have no makeup on, it's because I've cried it all off. <laughs> We're standing here by a beautiful stream. My husband is taking video. And I just have to say I'm so blessed. I'm free. And anybody who knows me knows that rarely happens. <laughs> I always have something to say, but right now all I can say is glory to God. And I pray that I'll always glorify him in my writing career. And I want to give serious thanks to Serious Writer, because I wouldn't be the writer I am today without you all. So glory to God. Amen. Okay, so did you guys hear that? Yes? A little bit. <laughs> All right. I'll play one more here real quickly because um, this one's fun. Yeah, that's it right there. <laughs> I think the sound's a little better here. Okay, so somebody should have told me how nerve-wracking this is, knowing that it's a big surprise. And here I am in New York City. I'm hiding out in a little room here because I'm so eager that I'm ready way, way early. And... Uh, Wow, this is, this feels like a life change for me. And I've been pondering and praying in recent weeks what this means. And truth is, I really don't know where we go from here. I only know, I told a friend, I feel like I've been shot out of a volcano, like one of those rocks that goes two miles high in the sky before it comes down. And I'm just really where I want to be right now is in front of my computer, <laughs> writing just as fast and as diligently as I can. And I'm so thankful 
thankful, grateful, humble, honored. You can hear so your that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, can you hear I'm like breathless? This this, this <laughs> never happens to me. Um and I I just um I wanted to uh share with you guys just a little of the excitement because it was just through truly thrilling and it, it was just like this lightning bolt um struck me and uh like i said i'm very seldom without words but there were a couple of times through that process where there were just no words for me to describe what that felt like and um i want to encourage you the purpose of all of this isn't to glorify me or glorify any particular contest it's to glorify God and to get you moving and encourage you that you can enter contests and you can win. And I'm going to share with you uh, some of my best secrets because I don't want them to be secrets. I want to be cheering you guys on. And I know there are several of my writers chat friends that I have seen at contests and I've seen your names at contests. You've won, you know what it's like, but I want to give you some uh, tips and tricks today. So if you have questions, put them in the chat and the ladies will interrupt me and ask. But I do, of course, have a PowerPoint, how <laughs> to enter and win. And there's just my, my favorite picture. It's me with my Serious Writer Award. And if, if you're looking at my screen, you see here's my little award. My husband made me promise not to sleep with it because it's so big and clunky <laughs> and heavy. He made me find a spot for it on a shelf. And every once in a while I go by and I'm like, yes, see, it's a, it's a benchmark. I did this. God helped me and I can do this. And on those days when I feel so discouraged, I'm so glad I have that to fall back on. So we're going to talk about how to enter and win contests. Can everybody see that? Can you guys see that? Is it coming through well? Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the first question is why should I enter? Well, your contest, it's an, it's an investment in your career. And when you enter a contest, you will work hard. And every time you enter a contest, you will improve your writing skills. Because nobody wants to turn in the crummy stuff they wrote during NaNoWriMo. You want to polish <laughs> it up and to make something good happen with your writing. It boosts your name recognition. Now, I have an unusual name and an unusual personality, I guess. So people remember me. But one of the things they remember is like, oh, I saw her. She, you know, when people uh, see that you've won a contest, there is this... Um, this, this thing that starts to happen with your name and people start to know who you are and they will actually come up and talk to you. So if you're an introvert, it's kind of scary. But if you're an extrovert like me, it's like, hello, come and talk to me. <laughs> so contest wins really enhance your pitches. And on my one sheets, every single one sheet I put out now, it has that little medallion I have from Serious Writer, Winner, Writer of the Year. And if a particular manuscript won a particular contest on my one sheet, it's got the little graphic that says that I, I won a contest. Um, you can, you receive a tax deduction for the conferences and things that you go to and these contest entries, you know, they are tax deductible if you're a professional writer. So if that's you and you need a tax deduction, go, go enter a contest and keep your receipt. Um, uh, you do support conferences and scholarships. One of the um, uh, contests that I entered was at Blue Ridge Mountain Christian Writers Conference. And I was happy to pay that contest entry fee because I know it was going straight into the scholarship fund. And so by entering in contests, I was supporting the organization and I was supporting people who received scholarships. So I think that is I great entered. that I had, you know, uh, last year I attended a writer's conference up in Michigan and paid just a little bit above the thing that went to bring military wives to the conference. Oh, and it, when you met them in person, that you enable them to come or to help like a, you know, it's just paying it forward, isn't it, Rhonda? Yeah, well, a lot of these conference uh, fees that you pay, it, it is well worth it when you know you're supporting a good organization. So um, there I am, you know, I supported Serious Rider and uh, Bethany and Kyle were there with me in New York City. And I just can't say, how it made me feel connected to the organization, but it also gave me a real boost. And I was introduced to, two, I actually already knew them, industry professionals. So it was the boost for my career. That's a good place to enter a contest. Now you may say, how can I find a contest? This lady is looking for something. <laughs> and if she's a writer, she's looking for a contest to enter. Well, I, I encourage you, and Melissa is putting some uh, links into our chat. 
If you want to go straight to the contest page at Series Writer, there's a link there. They are now running their Writer of the Year contest again, um, and it's time right now to enter. So if you have not entered Series Writer contest, do so. This was a great place for me to start. The feedback I got, the boost I got from them was wonderful. I entered a contest at the Blue Ridge Mountains Christian Writers Conference, and any of you that attend Blue Ridge, don't miss out on the opportunity to enter their contest. Um, it was really exciting to do that, and I will tell you, I didn't list it, but ACFW, the American Christian Fiction Writers, they have wonderful contests, and you actually get feedback from professionals where you can look and see what they had to say about your manuscript. I'm gonna talk about that a little later. Um, I found a link to a Jerry Jenkins uh, was giving a link for different contests and so forth. And you just kind of look through these contests and see if any of them sound interesting to you. Some of them like serious writers contests, you don't even have to be present to win. You may say, you know, I can't travel all over the country. I don't have that kind of money. Well, go ahead and enter their contest. Um, and I want to tell you in the Christian Mark, uh, writers, uh, not the Christian, in the Writer's Market Guide, the General Market Guide, there is a section on contests. And I have not been all the way through that. I'm not so much interested in some, excuse me, some of the secular contests, but I do uh, know that there's a section in there. So you find a contest, find one that appeals to you, and, and enter. So you can also do a search online for uh, those contest entries. And if you do, you will find them everywhere. And you know, they're not all equal. A contest is, you know, I, and I'm gonna talk about this in a minute um, because it, it's a challenging, the pool of people who, who enter the contest is different. The style of, of the contest, it has a different feel. But you can do a search online and find contests. Now my first great tip, and um, this is a great tip, you have to know your genre. You, if you've written something, you, you need to know, is it, uh, I write historical fiction. I write nonfiction. Some contests are just for fiction. Um, I need to know if it's romantic suspense. I need to know if it's contemporary romance or can general fiction. You have to know your genre. Serious Writer lists 14 different categories. And most contests, when you enter, they're gonna ask you to specify a genre. If you don't know your genre, you need to do a little study to know more about the genres. And why does that matter? Because if you enter the wrong genre, you may get shifted over into the right one, but you may enter in, in completely the wrong place. And that makes a difference. Um, you study these genres online, read the definitions, and here's the thing, meet word count expectations. I have to say how many words are in my manuscript that I've entered, and if I'm, if I'm writing a romantic, uh, a, you know, historical romance and my manuscript is 150,000 words, there's a problem right up, right off the bat, right? I, I alienate the judge before they even read my entry because I have not met expectations for word count. Go ahead, Johnny. Rhonda, I just really want to reiterate how important this is because like you said, some contests may go ahead and shift you to the correct one, but a lot of contests will say in their guidelines, it's up to you to choose. It's not up to us to choose. So you're going to put your entry in what you want to put it in. But then if you if, say you do um, romantic suspense, but the judge feels like, wow, there's really not much romance in this story, then you put the judge in the position of, well, but this is great writing, so I'm going to score it high anyway, or it's in the wrong genre. I can't score it high because it's not fair to the other people who are actually writing romantic suspense. So that might not be the greatest example in the world, but you really are then putting that onus on, on a judge to decide how now they're going to score you and how many points they're going to take off because you weren't um, in the right genre. And you just don't want to do that. You just don't want to do anything that's going to shoot yourself in the exactly. foot. Exactly. Exactly. And sometimes now in a contest, if there are not enough entries, they'll mash yes. categories. When I was at um, Blue Ridge, they put the historical romance just in with the historical novels. Mm -hmm. So the competition I was against was not a romance. My mine was a romance, but and I won second place there. But it was um, it was just kind of a mash. So things do kind of happen just because of, of the flow of entries into a contest, but it does know, you should know your genre. 
And now if you have well, I'm different just curious, Rhonda, I'm just curious, you know, if they, and, and I know Johnny, you've worked behind the scenes at contests. If they merge those, can't that also work against the writer? You have more competition. And well, usually they merge them when there weren't enough in one category. And I know with ACFW, it used to be that you would put down two. So like when I entered Where Treasure Hides, I considered it, considered it historical. So I put it as that as the main category. Um, but then historical romance was like my second category. So that they, so then you're giving the, the coordinator um, a chance, like if there weren't enough historical entries, it would go in my second choice category. But I don't know that all contests do that. So you really just have to read the guidelines and you just have to be super sure that you do what you're supposed to do. And I think that if they've, they've merged categories together, they're gonna let the judges know that. So the judges aren't going to um, penalize you. They're not gonna penalize, penalize you for it. Right, exactly, thank you. And yeah, you might, I mean, you may have more competition, but you might otherwise might not have had any competition, and they wouldn't have judged it. So it's more competition, yeah, is all it is. But the penalization, because right. all of a sudden you've written a romance and you're competing against maybe uh, I don't want to say a sharper, but a different kind of historical. Yeah, but you know what? The the thing of it is, it's like in broad terms, you've got historical and contemporary, right? I mean, so most people who are judging are going to be able to, to judge that okay. fairly. But I mean, I have, I have judged entries where it's like, this doesn't seem to me like it's in the right category. And it really is like, what do I do about it? You know, it's, it really is a, you know, it's kind of like, I brood about those kinds of things, you know, it's like, what's fair? <laughs> well, here's the thing. If you know your genre you, and you know you've entered in the right genre, you have maximized your potential for going far in the contest. And, the, you know, Johnny said something. She said, just don't shoot yourself in the foot. And I'm, you know, dancing gunshots all the time because I don't <laughs> want to uh, hinder myself in any way. And a lot of my right. advice goes right down that alley. So if you have different manuscripts enter multiple genres this is what i did with the series writer writer of the year contest and i think one of the reasons i won I, you know i i am speculating because i don't really know who judged the contest or how i won but i had two entries in the finals i had a nonfiction and a fiction both made the finals and the fiction manuscript is the one that won but i think when they're trying to decide you know on the body of work um, part, part of it was I had two really good entries. So don't limit yourself to one. If you have more than one entry and you can afford the entry fees, go ahead and do that. That's an advantage. So here's another thing. Study and know the market and be sure that you have an original idea. You know, if you're going to enter spec fiction and you're like, this is set just after the rapture and there's this group of people that have been left behind. You know, <laughs> the judge is just going to roll their eyes, you know, when they get to your concept. So you need to be sure that your concept within the market is original. So I knew when I was writing my historical romance, um, Regency is a thing, right? And I thought, well, Regency to me is just kind of boring. They all sound alike to me. So I'm going to take a little twist. I'm going to go into Scottish. Now, Scottish historical romance is also a thing, but not so much in the Christian or clean market. And I have to say, I've read some of them that, you know, kind of scorched my eyebrows. And um, it, it just, it just, I'm like, there is, there is a market. There is a market for this book that I'm writing because these judges, they are professionals. So they know the market. And if your idea and your concept is original within your genre, there's some twist or something that is going to work for you, I think, in getting a better score. Am I right, Johnny? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So know the market. So here's another idea. Plan your entire book. Now I got all excited because I only had to have um, the first 15 <laughs> pages of anything. And girls, I have written the first 15 pages of at least 15 novels, okay? <laughs> and they are just all over the place. So, so but I find that if I have mapped out the whole book, when I mapped out my entire historical fiction novel, it's called Ravenwood. I'll just call, tell you it's called Ravenwood. When I mapped it all out, my entry got better. And I started, it won an award, and but I'm gonna enter it again, so I'm gonna revise it. 
it, the more I, when I finally got the entire plot of my book, wow, it changed the end, the, the, the front end of it, and it was much better. So plan your entire book. For, for your fiction, write a synopsis of the whole book. It may not be the final synopsis that you end up turning in, but if you know where your story's going, your first 15 pages are going to be a lot better. For nonfiction, map out all the chapters. Have an idea where you're going. So don't just throw it out there. You know, it's like throwing a dart and just not even looking. You know, you want to look at what you're targeting and then make your pitch and, and see if you can. Uh, it just sharpens if, if you plan the entire book. Now, you knew this was coming, right? Didn't you? you have to <laughs> format because it's me talking to you today. You Before have to you go on, on, Rhonda, let me just stop you a minute. And um, oftentimes the contents, I know ACFW, they want you to include a synopsis in, in, so in their fiction context. So, you know, sometimes you're going to need that anyway. So it's really good just to go ahead and, and have it on hand. And I will say, what, when I entered uh, Serious Writer for their nonfiction entries, they want a, a summary of each chapter. So guess what happened when I had to buckle down? I wanted so much to enter the contest. When I'm ready now to pitch that book, I have synopses already written. I, a lot, nothing I have written is wasted. So my first crack at my synopsis was terrible. I have to tell you that. I had to go back and revise They it. are. They all <laughs> are, Rhonda. <laughs> okay. But, but the, the required work to do that, to enter the contest, was not wasted work. There was nothing. Well, yeah, we've got nothing. a couple questions in the chat that I don't want to lose real quick, but I don't want to throw you off too much, Rhonda. But maybe yeah. you and maybe with Johnny's background could comment on a little bit about, about short story contests. And, and, she, and Patricia was interested in an example, kind of what a chapter summary might look like. Length, what would you say in it? Maybe a quick example. Can either of you two respond to those? I can say what I did. For my nonfiction book, when I did, now, I didn't have to do summary chapters for the fiction. I just did a synopsis for the right. fiction. The chapter summaries came in in the nonfiction. And again, it was required by the contest. I kept them short. They were no more than three sentences because I didn't want to write my whole book to send in. That's the other thing. You don't want to overload some poor judge who's reading, if they're reading 30 entries, you don't want a whole page in your entry on each chapter. Mm -hmm. So it rarely was a synopsis. I'm demonstrating, I understand a synopsis is short. So if it was more than three sentences, I was trying to cut it. Is that right, Johnny? Well, I, I don't know about nonfiction because I've never judged nor entered nonfiction, but I know for fiction, they will usually say a one page synopsis. And you know then that it has to be tight. And you know, they're usually they're it's going to be in the guidelines what they want so they probably with nonfiction I can see a contest wanting to see making sure you know where you're going with this wanting to know your chapter titles but probably no more than a sentence or two if if that um to be in, included uh it's short true. stories I really I've never I've not done much with short stories I used to help with a contest that um, the ACFW Central Florida chapter did based on a photo. And I mean, it was like 500 words and we were giving away a, um, a scholarship to the Florida Christian Writers Conference. So it was a really good prize and we hardly ever had more than 10 or 11 entries in the years that we did it. So the odds of winning were really good. Um, but I think the value of short story contests is the value of any contest that there's a possibility of, you know, your name is getting out there. Uh, you might be getting feedback that's valuable. And in that short story world, you know, lots of times that means being published in an anthology or something like that. And it could be that, you know, you put that in your, it's something else to add to your whole um, proposal that you, you know, you either placed or you won or, you know, you got feedback, great feedback from, and who knows what, you know, there may be agents and editors out there who like reading short stories and, so I don't know that many agents actually represent people who write short stories that much, at least not in the inspirational market. They may in the general market. Patricia clarified her question a little bit. She was asking for chapter summaries for fiction 
uh, not a contest, like for your general. Did you mention that, Rhonda, that you kind of did chapter summaries for your You family? know, I did not, I do not do chapter summaries except for myself. I did them for myself when I was writing. Okay. And from, like, from, from, from what I've seen, no one has asked me for chapter summaries. No, they're not going to do they that. They want a synopsis. And right. But if you get on yourself, did, did you just think like what the action was in that or the plot yes. or the character? Yes. Okay. You have to be really clear on your synopsis because you only have one page and it usually a single space. So that gives you a little bit more words. But, you know, a synopsis, a synopsis is really hard to write because we all want to just include all this stuff in our story. What you really need to do, and this could be a whole nother, maybe not an hour topic, but at least a half hour topic. Um, you want to focus on what your main character wants, the obstacles keeping them from getting it, and there probably should be at least three, not to be formulaic, but that is just kind of the way it is, and then how it's going to be resolved. And you do want to show the resolution in your synopsis. Do not leave the agent or editor or judge hanging. They're, you know, like, will she get the love of her life and will they be free from whatever is bothering them? No, you have to show that you know how the story is going to end. They're not wanting to a cliffhanger, but that's what you do and everything else is extraneous. So you just have to be very, very straightforward in what that story is about by focusing on your main character. I will say too that I use, there's lots of ways to plot and we talked about this some when we were building up for NaNoWriMo but I use the save the cat model where there are 15 plot points. And when I went to write my synopsis, guess what? Ta -da -da -da! There were 15 <laughs> plot points in my synopsis. The structure of my synopsis then was real clear. And, and I knew not to follow this backstory or that little rabbit, you know, down, down a hole. It really helped me to focus. So yeah, I agree that I would love to see a writer's chat from someone who has experience writing synopses because they're tough. But let's move on right now with, uh, with our contest entries because I do have some other tips to share. Um, first of all, I, and now I'm going to say, you know, know your genre. Now I'm going to say, be sure you format well. You know, there's nothing worse than entering a contest and maybe you have a great piece, but it's a mess and you have, you have violated all of the format rules. So I'm going to say, Use an up-to-date version of Microsoft Word, 2000 or later. And I'm just going to boldly say, if your version of Word is older than 2000, get an update. It's less than 100 bucks. You can find great sales sometimes. Even, you know, Microsoft, I use Microsoft 2010. I'm still there in 2010. So use an up-to-date version of Word. Use standard one-inch margins, Times New Roman 12-point font. Now, some... Others will, I've heard, I've seen some people that will accept Garamond or, you know, the, the, just here's the thing. When you read contest guidelines, do not deviate. Do not consider yourself a special case. Do not think that your font is just perfect for you. It, use Times New Roman 12 point. If it allows that, and they all do, I never go anywhere else. Even if they say they'll accept Courier or something because it throws things off for me. And um, here's another tip. You know, most people say, we wanna see the first 15 pages of your document, but your cover page often shows up in your page numbering as page one. Uh, and so I want my manuscript to start on page one and end on page 15. Now, I don't know if this is a little trick that makes my entries any better than anybody else's, but I will tell you what, I have a template that you won't even have to figure it out. Just email me. I will send you my template and it leaves the, the page number off the title page. So my entry was, was uh, numbered pages one through 15 and that I just was so proud of myself. So um, use paragraph commands to indent the first line of your paragraphs half an inch. That's Please that's don't that's tab. That. Please don't tab. Uh, they, these are professional people. If you use crummy formatting, they will recognize right away that you don't know what you're doing. And if your manuscript is just as good as someone else's, but it has this, this juvenile formatting, guess who's got the advantage? You know, the one, I want every advantage and I want my mind to be formatted beautifully. I use page breaks to avoid widows and orphans. A widow, uh, I, I don't re remember which is which, but you should not have only one line of a paragraph at the bottom of a page nor should you have only one line of a paragraph at the top of the next page, unless 
the entire paragraph is one line. Okay, in fiction that happens sometimes is dialogue. Okay, but don't just don't just hit enter 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 enter. Use something called a page break. If you don't know how to do that, look it up. You're smart. I know you can figure it out. Let me just say that lots of times what happens, and the reason this is so important, is because you might have it looking great on your say that you didn't know how to use a page break, which I think is control enter that creates the page break. Um, and you just tab, tab, or not tab, but you enter, 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 enter. enter. But then you send that document to me and my work, uh, Microsoft Word program opens it. And guess what? They're, it's all wonky because those, they just don't necessarily stay the same. If it's a page break, it's going to stay the same. But if it's a lot of just lines or even the tab, it, it's just not. Um, and Patricia my, asked about showing the paragraph tool to see the extra spaces and tabs, etc. cetera. Um, right. And I will tell you right now, instead of spending a lot of time here, if you will go back in the writer's yeah. chat archives, I taught a lesson on formatting and that was all in there. It's all in there. So just, just go back and watch that video. If you want to talk about any of these format things, that, that was all in there and how to, it, how to do it. And I demonstrated it with a screen share with Word open. So that should be a real help to you if you've not seen that. But um, my, my Ravenwood entry, first 15 pages, there were two chapters. So starting chapter two, I used a page break after chapter one to get down to starting chapter two, rather than just hitting enter repeatedly. That'll show them, you know what you're doing with Microsoft Word. Mm -hmm. And here's the, what I was gonna say, if you need formatting tips, watch my video in the writer's chat archives, you can search it up. And Melissa, if, even if you had that link, you might put that, drop that in the chat of this video, because we want people to format beautifully, format professionally. Let me say then that, if you're trying to look for these, they, they are on, they're always on the face, the Writer's Chat Facebook group in, in there. They're on the Writer's Chat Facebook page and they are on YouTube in the Serious Writer channel. So, I mean, that might be the easiest place to scroll through and find it. For me, that was the easiest place. Was yeah. to just go onto YouTube and do a search in the, yeah. in the Writer's Chat channel. Um, here for formatting, please don't use special fonts or colors. Judges are not going to be impressed if you have, you know, gorgeous scrolly things or, you know, no graphics, no special fonts, no special colors. Just keep it simple and make it uh, meet their guidelines. Use underlining or italics only if they're absolutely needed and then only use them very sparingly. Be sure if you're using uh, special formatting that it is called for in the manuscript and the style of the manuscript. So that's <laughs> formatting. You knew I was going to have to talk about formatting, right? Yes. Uh, I'm hurrying up a little bit because I've still got some good content here. Um, here's another thing. If you're going to enter a contest, write well, you know, that should be obvious. But, but here's some tips to writing well. First of all, use strong verbs brutally cut passive voice. I mean brutal. Do a word search on your entry. If you see the word was or were, figure out why it's there and if you can reword to get rid of passive voice. If you don't know how to get rid of passive voice, there are videos and tutorials all over online. Educate yourself, write an active voice. It'll give you an advantage. And here's, a, don't tell anybody I said this, and this is all over the internet, but write, <laughs> Write your entry to a satisfying ending. I entered the ACFW uh, First Impressions Contest. They want the first five pages. And at the end of my fifth page, I'm like, well, blah, that's boring. I don't want to stop there. So I cheated. And I'll just be quite honest. I went back and I formatted that entry like it was its own short, short story. I wanted it to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. So if they only read five pages, it was a good five pages. And when they got to the end, they're like, my favorite word, yee-haw, that was good, okay? And there's some kind of satisfying ending. And I cheated. Now, the first uh, chapter of my novel is not going to be that way. I can tell you right now. It's going to end differently. The first five pages are different. But this was, uh, this was a, its own thing. I wanted it to be self-contained. And so that entry, even my 15 page entry ends in the, for me in the middle of chapter two, when I got to the end where I stopped and I believe me girls, this is hard work. 
and guide. Sorry, I should not be so tender. <laughs> but it's some hard work, okay? And it is crafting, though, my entry in such a way that the judge, when they're done reading my entry, they feel satisfied. Like, this is a good ending. So write to a satisfied it. Let me say too, along that line, never, never, never just stop in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> Even oh. if you're going to be, you know, meaning that you're not going to get in your full 15 pages or five pages, do make sure. I mean, I li actually like what Rhonda said. And as a judge, it, it is kind of nice when it seems like this was a good stopping place in the story. So try to you know, find that stopping place, create that stopping place. And even if you can't do that, at least do not just stop in the middle of a sentence and then the judge is going, okay, what, what just happened? Because then you don't even know if it's a mistake. I mean, it's like, okay, you know, what's, what's going on here? So, so this fits my, my best advice. Try to get in the head of a judge. What would you like to see? <laughs> and if I'm really engrossed in a wonderful entry and then it ends in the middle of a sentence or it's just off-putting. I feel like, you know, somebody stabbed me at the end. <laughs> so I want to see, uh, I want to see something that seems complete and just do okay. your best. It's not always possible. And I have really struggled. I mean, I put in hours figuring out the ending where I wanted my uh, contest entry to end. And it's worth taking that time to do. So we're, we're on the, the um, topic, write well. Here's some tips for you who write fiction. First of all, begin with some action. You know, do you want to know what's going to happen to this girl hanging over this chasm with the water? You know, <laughs> begin with action. And this is true for your book, not just for your contest entry. But be sure your contest entry usually is compressed. So it's even more important if you're writing fiction that you start with action. Uh, avoid backstory. If you've only got five pages or 15 pages to enter and you spend a lot of time in backstory, you're going to waste a lot of your judges' goodwill. They want to, to see things happening and they don't necessarily need to, to have, you know, the entire plot laid out uh, through and your entire backstory of your character. Um, here's something that I just learned. No more than five characters. I, I put an entry. I won't tell, say where I did but uh, it was anonymous and I was watching live while some professionals looked at what I had written and I had too many characters. And when I was listening to their comments, it was like, oh, rats. <laughs> but I had done that. I, me personally, I had done that. I confused them. So it's important not to confuse people. Uh, get to the meat of your story. Uh, my Ravenwood entry introduced about five characters all together in 15 pages. And any more than that, now there are more than five characters in my book, but they don't all have to show up in those first 15 pages. And if there is another character that shows up, he isn't showing up in my contest entry, okay? He can show up in my book, but a contest entry is a little bit different. So don't confuse someone, even if you know them very well. And you're, if your favorite character isn't in there, just go have yourself a little cry and cut him out anyway, okay? Did we make you cry, Rhonda? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Johnny, I wasn't going to say who was there. Oh, well. I did cry, but it was just, I tell you what it was, it was like a cup of cold water in my face because I thought it was so good. See? It but was I, good. The writing was very right. good, but, okay. but there were but I had made. <laughs> I had made this mistake, and I tell you what, I learned I it will not make a mistake again, and now that you've listened to this, you won't either. That's the good thing. Okay. So writing well for fiction, include your inciting incident. Listen, it's supposed to be there, even in the first five pages. And if it's not there, your judge will be going, okay, what, where is this you know, inciting incident? If you know, don't know what that is, Google it. It's what drives everything and makes everything happen. The status quo is here for, for two or three pages, and then boom, something happens. I mean, what's the point of a book if nothing happens? Hello. Okay, so make something happen and make it happen within that, the, your contest entry. Uh, avoid point of view mistakes. And, you know, I am still, I'll be honest, that's the, another weakness of, of what I had critiqued live was there were point of view mistakes and I did not know what they were until I heard <laughs> some folks professionally saying, hmm, you know, and now where are we going point of view wise? And if you don't know about point of view, again, it's as an essential skill in the publishing industry right now. 
and I am I am I finished my book and right now I'm going through cleaning up identifying and cleaning up mistakes in point of view um, again meet the genre expectations you know if it's historical uh, romance like mine was be sure there's something in there that says where you are I mean it may be that your castle shows up in chapter three but but there's some something in your descriptions should identify what uh, what genre you're writing in so if there's uh, if you're writing romance hey it should have both your hero and your heroine in your contest entry if not if it's just all backstory of the hero you're in trouble because it's romance there's supposed to be two people and not just one do you see oh, what i mean yeah so i just to kind of go back to the synopsis thing and i said that about your main character in a romance you do want to have both of them like your first paragraph is probably going to be about one the second paragraph about the other what they want the obstacles and then kind of merging the two together and then the end you know they live happily ever after kind of thing so just kind of correct what i said about the synopsis in that in a romance it's really important anymore that that hero and heroine have about 50% of the story, really, that they, you see their point of view half and half. I just read a book called Wooing Katie McCaffrey by Bethany Turner, and she has won contests, and she's a really fabulous writer, and she's she uh, takes off on the what they call meet cute mm -hmm. uh, in, in the first chapter of her book, and I thought, you know, that would be a fabulous contest entry, and this is something you can do. Get some of these books that have won contests, read the first five pages and stop and understand why it is that this writer has won contests. What did they do? And what can I learn from what they've done? So meet your genre expectations. If it's a thriller, something thrilling should happen in the, in your contest. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> something scary, something scary. <laughs> I read Brandy Lynn Collins and a woman gets in a hot tub and there's a body in there. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, I, I soon decided I can't read thrillers. <laughs> because I just was, wow, ah, romantic suspense is what she was doing. There was certainly some suspense. Okay, so if you're writing nonfiction, I want to talk to you about writing well. In your, in your contest entry, don't introduce yourself. Please don't make your contest entry about yourself. Even if it is your, your very um, heartfelt personal experience that is the meat of your book, don't focus on the topic and the importance of the topic rather than yourself as the writer. Um, include narrative and stories. The contest entry that got so far in the series writer contest, the first part of it is a, is a, uh, is a, 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 how can I explain this? It is the biblical characters who wrote my key verse interacting. So I've got Joshua and Caleb sitting at the feet of Moses and listening to his instruction to the people and it's written like fiction, okay? So it's a fictionalized account of them there that put that verse into context for the reader. And I think that's, that was an advantage for me. And that is one of my best secrets. And I just gave it away to everybody for free. But, but it draws people in to try to imagine, okay, why was this verse written? Who was it written to? Who was listening when this was said? And why was it said to them? And what impact does it have on my nonfiction? Um, when you're entering a contest and they ask you for those chapter synopses don't just throw out any any you know three sentences those three sentences have to be well written and i worked on on the the not just the chapter i submitted but i worked hard on those synopses to be sure that they were very well written that they did not include passive voice which let me tell you something in nonfiction, that's tough that's real a tough assignment but be sure it is some of your best writing, even in the chapter synopses. So now I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna speed up gals. Here we go. Edit, 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 edit. If you have not watched Kyle Young's videos on the polished draft, you need to do that. Put, I put every manuscript that I enter into the contest, if it's his contest or not, I put it through that process because it will help improve your writing. Pay attention. If Microsoft Word underlines something in red, find out why it's underlined in red or in green or in blue, because there's a problem, okay? And if it shows up that way in your Word, guess what's gonna happen when your judge opens it? Hello, it's gonna be there too. It points out to them exactly where those mistakes are. So pay attention to signals of spelling and grammar. 
use an editing program, you know, get on Grammarly. I, I gave a, a commercial for something called Autocrit. You know, there are all kinds of ways you can use an editing program. And tighten, 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 okay? So you get a critique. I'm gonna speed through some of this because I've got some good content at the end. So get a critique. You know, I sent off all of my contest interests to my critique group and not just my mother. My mother loved my, my son and she loved it, but not my best friends either. But join a critique group. If you're not in a critique group, you need to be in one. I'm just gonna say that boldly. Um, get a paid critique. One of my contest entries, I paid someone professionally to look at it. And I was glad I did because that person pointed out to me some definite improvements that I needed to make. And then here's a great one, submit. Guess what, you can write the best contest entry in the world, if you don't submit it, you're not gonna win, okay? You have to submit. So, and here's a clue, submit early. A couple of my contests I entered like on the very last hour of the very last day, and guess what, I didn't get anywhere. And I think part of it was, the judge was really tired by the time they got to my entry, one of the entries I put in, one judge gave it 100 and said it was the best thing she'd ever, he or she had ever written and they'd never given 100. And the very next judge gave it a 60. Guess what? I think that second judge was tired, right? <laughs> I have to think that. Certainly it wasn't my writing, <laughs> but uh, God forbid that it was my writing. But submit early. I think it does give you an advantage if you are ahead of the game and not putting it in right at that very last minute deadline. Follow all of the instructions very carefully and keep your, you know, when you submit it, you usually submit it by email these days. Uh, keep that email short and professional. You know, you're not trying to kiss up to the coordinator. They don't care if, if you have won 10 contests before, they don't need to know that. There's no reason to, to grease the wheels there or to flatter the coordinator. Pay attention, be sure your submission was received. Most contests will give you a confirmation that they've received your entry, it's important. If you haven't heard anything in a couple days, contact them again to be sure you did it right. And don't fail that courage test. I wanna tell you, my hands shook every time I hit enter uh, and submit. My hands shake every time. Now, here's, here's some great stuff. Prepare to win, okay? If it's awards night, dress up, you know, cause guess what? you're probably gonna have your picture taken. Sit near the front of the auditorium. I was at Blue Ridge and it was a big auditorium. And oh man, some of the winners were sitting way in the back. Guess what I did? I, I thought I might win. I'm sitting up front because I don't want everybody watching the parade. <laughs> you know? And it slows everything down. So be polite if you've entered the contest and there's even a possibility you're gonna win. Sit near the front, check your breath. <laughs> One time I had just had coffee and I'm like, oh my goodness, I wonder what they're smelling. <laughs> Hugs are coming. Here I am at Blue Ridge with Michelle Medlock Adams. And I have to say, before my very first contest, I found her and another of the serious writer glamour girls. They know who they are. <laughs> the women's room putting on fresh makeup. And when you see one of my pictures here in a few minutes, you will understand why. Because they, they were refreshing their makeup after a long day. Because guess what? You're going you're gonna to be on display. So act like a pro if they call your name. No fist pumping. No moonwalking. <laughs> okay? Just act like a pro. Like, yes, I win every day. This is just in my wheelhouse. <laughs> Pay attention to your posture. And I have, I have sent a link to um, Melissa about how to pose for pictures. You know, we don't often think of this, but how many times I had a couple of contest wins where I would not have put that picture up in my bathroom. I mean, it was terrible, <laughs> the picture. So pose, there are, there are tips for people how to pose like a pro. Be sure you thank the presenters and uh, congratulate other winners. Um, you know, be gracious, shake their hand, congratulate them. Um, Exchange business cards with them. That's the first time I got Mary Gardner's um, business card because we, uh, she won the contest and I was third place in, in, in my very first contest in, non -fic in fiction. And so we exchanged business cards and I've gotten to know her and I really appreciate her. And contest uh, is a great place to meet other writers. Post your win on social media. And I will tell you, I took a, I took a hit from some friends of mine 
who just thought I was just acting too puff, puffed up, you know, too proud of my win. But, but here's the thing. If I have a business, I have a brand. If I have a brand, guess who is the face of that brand? It is me. I am my own product. And this is part of being a writer. And I have to understand if I promote my product, what I'm doing is I'm promoting me. And even though some people may slap me on the hand and say, that's not very Christian of you, you're, you're acting like you're too proud. Well, it's part of what I need to do to advance my career. And that's the way I'm looking at it. So here's another clue. Finish and submit your work. Guess when I finished Ravenwood? New Year's Eve this year. Okay. I had the first 15 pages. They were great. But guess what I had to do after I won? Write the rest of the book. <laughs> right? <laughs> Write the rest of the book. Finish and submit your work. Don't take a breather. Winning the contest was not my goal. It was nice, but my goal is to get that book published. So if I just sit back and say, now the offers are going to roll in, guess what? Maybe they do, but if I don't have my book done, there's a big problem, right? So here's another thing. In our other context, I took Ravenwood and I entered it in the Blue Ridge Mountain Christian Writers Conference. It won second place. And I was real excited, and so did my nonfiction. They both won. I entered them again in Blue Ridge, so enter again. But here's some advice for when you don't win. Because girls, guys, I've entered contests and I did not win. I sent the first five pages of my winning entry, just verbatim. I cut it off. I made sure it had a good ending. I sent it into the ACFW First Impressions Contest. Cricket. The very same thing, right? I thought I'm a shoe in. I'm just gonna send this in, I'm gonna win another one, right? Not necessarily, because it was a different pool of writers, okay? And it was a, a different kind of critter. There were different judges. So I have some experience in not winning. And here's what I've learned by not winning, okay? Uh, first of all, you're not a loser. I just said you didn't win. I didn't say you lost, right? So if you push the but button and said submit, you've already done more than a lot of people ever do, right? So it's a big step in your career. You don't have to think of yourself as a loser. I just didn't win and if for me, I wanna find out why I didn't win, okay? And I wanna make my next entry better. Consider it practice for being a professional because guess what? There are going to be, a, there's a lot of rejection in this business. And I thought, I'm a big girl. I can take it. Well, I want to tell you something. It still stings, right? So when you lose, you have to learn how to ward off that sting. And it will be good for you later in your career because you might be submitting to an editor or an agent and, and you don't win there. Well, in these contests, you can have practice for keeping your cool when you get a rejection. Uh, and my best advice, remember why it is, why do you write? You know, this is a question that I had to ask myself when I kind of uh, had to take a second look. Why do I write? So sometimes it's a matter of contemplation. It's a matter of prayer. It's a matter of refocusing. It's a matter of taking it in stride and being like those runners, you know, they just run the next race. If they didn't win, you know, they may sit down and they may have, but then they trade harder and they enter again, right? And some of those folks that win the Olympics, they didn't win their first race. They don't win every race and they have to learn uh, to refocus. And so for me as a Christian writer, you know, I write for the pleasure of God. That's why I write. I don't know why anybody else writes because he gifted me, he told me to. And when I enter a contest, it isn't just so I will win, it's so that I can glorify him and do what he wants me to do, okay? So if, I, if my entry didn't win, it doesn't mean God doesn't want me to write anymore. That is still in me, no matter what is external. I have to figure out what is internal to me. So when you don't win, congratulate the winners. You know, go up and say, this is, just take some boldness, and I've done it. I'm not telling you to do anything I did. I went up to Mary Gardner. <laughs> I congratulated her. She had just beaten me. I gave her a little joke because that's my personality. I'm like, I'm going to get you next time, you know, but congratulate the winners and say, I entered your category. Congratulations. 
and congratulate yourself because you know what? You entered. Good for you. Even if you didn't win, you have done something worthwhile. Exchange business cards. Even if you didn't win, say, hey, I really want to know more about your writing. I, want to, I would love to see what you do. Ask to read excerpts. And I'll tell you this too. This will increase some traffic to my website. But I have excerpts from all of my winning entries are online. They're called In Production. And I have put an excerpt. So if you want to read an excerpt of my contest entry right now, if you go to rondadragomir.com, that's spelled with an O, Dragomir. <laughs> uh, go to my website and you'll see in production you'll see my book Ravenwood down at the bottom I've uploaded a PDF you can upload it and read it if you say want to say hey I want to know if somebody won a contest I'm going to go out if they've already you know written a book I'm going to see what, what they did what did they do that is different from what I did and perhaps I can figure out why they won and how I can improve my next entry so keep honing your skills, even if you don't win. Polish your manuscript for the next contest and then guess what? Enter again, enter again, right? Because you never know when it is that you will hit just that, that magical place where the right manuscript, the right judges, the right competition, the right circumstances, and you could be the next winner. So that's all I've got. I'm gonna stop sharing and I guess it's probably time to invite folks back on. It right? is. We don't have a lot of time left, but um, yeah, everybody come back on. And um, while you're doing that, let me talk about next week. We're going to be reading, uh, well, hopefully you will have already read. We're going to be talking about Dancing on the Head of a Pen by Robert Benson. If you don't have the book, aren't able to get it, aren't able to read it, please come anyway, just to share in the discussion. It's going to be an open mic kind of thing. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how we're going to do this, but we're going to be sharing, you know, things that were important to us as, you know, those of us who read it. So if you do read it, you know, you might want to find a couple things that you wanted to talk about. Um, I'm going to say, Rhonda, this was excellent. I think you could take this presentation and market it to writing conferences. It well, is thank you, Jean. I'm, all, I'm already doing that. <laughs> I think yeah. you could do it. You got it done. I would milk it a little bit and get, uh, di uh, paid for to go to a writing conference and maybe not have to, I would offer it to, yeah. to like Edie or at Blue Ridge or uh, Series Writers or one of those. I just thought it was excellent, full yeah. of encouragement, great tips. This is kind of a workshop I love going to at Writers Conferences. I'm going to tell Thank you that. You. Thank great you. Job. Thank you. And a couple things in the chat. Brandy said, you know, while you're waiting for the results, start working on something else. I think that yeah. is just such great. good advice. Also, there was a little bit of discussion about judges, and, and I have seen it from as a category coordinator for, um, for the Genesis, ACFW Genesis contest, and I've talked about this before. I would see entries come in, and I would record their scores, and, you know, it was nothing. I mean, it happened a lot for an entry to get two really high scores and a bad score or two bad scores and a high score, and that is just part of the subjectiveness of judging, even though we give criteria, we try to make it as objective as possible. You, you're just gonna to appeal to some readers and not to others, but that's the reality in the publishing world too. So it seems like the whole judging and the contest and all that, it's kind of like a, a microcosm of the real world. And you know, you learn to get that thick skin, you learn to accept that criticism you don't wanna accept. You learn that some judges just do not know what they're talking about and you just have to you know, set that aside and you know, move on but that's what's going to happen when you're publishing too so you know it's it's like a training ground almost well why don't you Rhonda you can stay to the after party and yeah. stuff like that why don't we wrap up the recording and then we'll, we'll have if people want to ask questions at the after party Johnny did you want to say something um about the contest that uh Bethany wanted you to say something about something she um, well, she wanted me to talk about the North Carolina Christian Writers Conference is coming up, but actually I'm saving that for those who stay in the after party. We All talked right. about this well, morning on the phone. All right. so, sorry if you're watching the replay. <laughs> but, <laughs> this, is, yeah, this is after party news, so I'm going to save it for that. 
we share that and stuff. But thank you again, Rhonda. This was more than good, more than full of uh, wonderful information and resources. And we really, really appreciate it. We love it anytime you want to come on. Thanks. So, uh, I love it. Yeah, so be sure you join us next week, everybody, for Robert Benson's book, Dancing on the Head of a Pen. Pen. And it is a great book, so if you haven't even read it, come on and hear some of the tips. We'll share you a lot with that because it is a super book and stuff. So we'll see you all next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>